Greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum. This is Sumaya Khalifa with the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, bringing you Ramadan greetings. We are so excited to be with you and be part of your day uh, to bring you inspirations. And as you all know, every single weekday, we bring you an amazing scholar, an amazing leader who would talk about things that we need to be thinking about to make our day, our week, and our life better. Uh, today, we are very honored to have uh, Ustaz Zainab Ansari joining us, and we look forward to her series on the attributes of God. So, Ustaz Zainab, welcome. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh. So glad to be here. So good to see everybody. Ramadan Mubarak, I pray that everybody is in the best of health and spirits. We begin, as always, in the name of Allah Ta'ala, most gracious, most merciful. So I'm so excited about sharing this Ramadan of 2020, 1441 with all of you. And I would like to continue reflecting on our theme for the last few weeks of the, the mercy of God. So as I mentioned, there are 99 names by which we call Allah the Exalted. They are names of grandeur, Jalal, and names of beauty, Jamal. So in reflecting on uh, the mercy of God, I wanted to share with everybody here um, a beautiful prophetic hadith from Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So let me just go ahead and cue that up. Okay, there we are. Perfect. So this is a very famous hadith. It is part of a longer narration that you can find in uh, the collection of Ibn Khuzayma and um, the, also a, a work called Branches of Faith or Shu'ab al-Iman by Imam al-Bayhaqi. But usually you see the excerpt from the hadith, which I'm sharing with everybody today. Because of course, in reflecting on the vast mercy of God, I was reminded of this important hadith or this saying or tradition of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that this is a month referring to Ramadan, the first part of which brings God's mercy, rahmah, the middle of which brings his forgiveness or maghfirah is the term, and the last part of which brings al-atiq min al-nar or emancipation from the fire. So traditionally scholars have understood Ramadan as being divided into these three parts. So the first 10 days of Ramadan in which we find ourselves now are the days of mercy. So of course, it is definitely apropos to reflect on Allah Ta'ala's mercy during these months. Now, one thing that's so interesting to me is that the other day, I was talking to somebody about how when um, you're indoors and you're not in your kind of normal routine of going to the office and work and school and so on, that sometimes day and night can, it can merge together. In other words, that, that one day kind of slips into the next. And for some of my friends, they were kind of having a little bit of difficulty remembering, was this the weekend or was it a weekday? So that's why I'd like to encourage all of us to reflect again on locating the manifestations of God's mercy in something that we don't really think about until we're kind of confronted with a change in our schedule. And that's our daily calendar. Again, what a beautiful blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of God uh, most exalted that the day is distinct from the night and the night is distinct from the day, right? The day being that time of work, that time of productivity, and that night being that time of rest. And of course, in Ramadan, a time for worship. And one of the wonderful blessings of Ramadan is that sometimes day and night can become inverted in a really fascinating way to where we might actually use part of the day to rest so that during the night we might be inspired to read more Quran or to do more contemplation or reflection or to worship at night. And again, what an amazing thing it is to have the physiology, because human beings, you know, we do have really unique physiology in that we are quite, you know, attuned to patterns of day and night. You have perhaps heard about circadian rhythms and how we often need a certain amount of quiet and sort of dimmed lights around us to actually rest. And how when we are in the presence of bright lights or screens, that is often a signal to our brain for us to wake up. So again, locating the mercy of God in time, in the calendar, in the transition from day to night and night to day, and how uh, in observing Ramadan, we become even more kind of attuned to these patterns of time. So again, remember these first 10 days of Ramadan, we're already on day four. We wanna make sure to avail ourselves um, of every opportunity to, to, to receive God's vast 
and mercy and compassion and love. And that brings to mind something else that I wanted to share with everybody, that there is this beautiful tradition where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would start his day with some type of remembrance of God and also end his day with this remembrance. Uh, there's a verse in the Quran, وَسَبِّحُهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا and a glorify his praise uh, in the morning and the evening. And one of the things about Ramadan is that we are usually kind of more, um, I think, inspired to kind of take those pauses in a way that we don't maybe outside of the month so much and actually say, okay, I'm up early in the morning. I perhaps have extra time for reflection, for contemplation. What can I kind of do or say early in the morning to get my day off to a good start? So even though, of course, we're a little bit past that morning hour of sahur and the pre-dawn meal and fajr prayer and all of that, I still wanted to share this really nice supplication with all of you. Again, there was uh, really, the supplications that the Prophet did were not only practical, but uh, they brought together, together the practical and the spiritual, right? In other words, this is something practical that you can do at different times of the day, but also a reminder to kind of boost the spirit, right? A reminder of the mercy of God. And that's why he started the day, peace and blessings be upon him, with this supplication. So I'll go ahead and read both parts of it. We have entered a new day along with all the dominion which belongs to God, Lord of all that exists, Lord of the worlds. Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra hadha al-yawm. And then we now uh, supplicate, O oh Allah, I ask you for the goodness of, the, of this day. Fathahu, it's opening. Wa nasrahu, it's victory. Wa nurahu, it's light. Wa barakatahu, it's blessings. Uh, and wa khuda, right? And it's guidance. And then wa a'udhu bika min sharri ma fi, wa sharri ma ba'da. And I seek refuge in you from the evil that is in it and from the evil that follows it. So this is a really important supplication to begin our, our day with, um, seeking God's protection, and also really stating emphatically that all of our trust belongs with God, that this is really a statement of optimism about this day and the blessings that this day will bring. And remember, even though this is a unique way of observing Ramadan, really quite un unprecedented in the history of humanity, that Ramadan would be observed by Muslims globally, you know, indoors, there is a lot of mercy in this in terms of being concerned for the health of those around us and also being able to kind of, again, slow down and to contemplate, again, that passage of day into night and night into day and to thank God most exalted for the countless blessings he has bestowed upon us. Um, and first and foremost, it is just the ability to witness a new, yet another Ramadan, a new Ramadan, with our, with our loved ones, with our family and friends and community. And even though we might not be with each other in person, we are still connected through the heart. So I am so happy to share this with all of you today. Thank you for tuning in. And I look forward to joining all of you next time, inshallah. Thank you so much, Ustaz Zainab, for beautiful, beautiful reminders about the du'a, the supplication to start off our day in a very positive way, according to the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And thank you so much for reminding us as well about the Ramadan and the three parts of it, uh, how it's for forgiveness, uh, mercy, forgiveness, and emancipation from the hellfire. We all will be striving to work hard to achieve all those three parts, uh, God willing. Thank you again for being with us. I uh, hope that you all would subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, stay tuned to more inspirations on Ramadan uh, from the ISB. If you like our work, we would really appreciate your support at isbatlanta.org. Uh, thank you again, Ustaz Azina, and may we all have a very blessed day and a great week ahead of us. Jazakallah. Thank you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.